Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Art Show. We really appreciate you tuning in. As you can see, uh, today's a little bit different because of COVID, uh, the restrictions that we have uh, for pre-recording this conversation with my guest, Gene Plow, today. Uh, thank you, Gene, for coming today. I'm excited to be talking to you about your work. Uh, before we begin, I also want to just give a big shout out to all the people who not only logged in uh, this evening, but to those people who made donations in support of the center. As you can imagine, these times are really tough for small nonprofits like ourselves, and we really appreciate your support. And so thank you very much. Um, so Gene, thank you again for coming today uh, from your studio location. And uh, I'd like to just kick it off where I normally do, which is uh, how did your life begin in the arts? Well, Craig, I was trying to think back when you said that. And I think that when I was a kid, I thought I would, I would be a musician. I used to like music a lot, but I didn't like practicing. I didn't like practicing and I would, I would not enjoy it. Whereas I loved, you know, coloring and, and um, painting, <laughs> anything like that. But people in my, uh, some kids in my school used to always say, oh, Jean's is scribbling and she's coloring outside of the lines. <laughs> and, um, but I still enjoyed it. And then when I got in high school, it was more like, I just liked the people that were, that were also involved in art. I had a lot of, in common with those people. And all my friends were either interested in art or music. And it just kind of worked out that way. I, I was kind of a rebellious teenager and uh, I came, I went to University of the Arts. It was PCA then and I loved it there. I just mm -hmm. loved it to have a lot of people just, you know, creative people there. It was like so stimulating. But when I was little, you know, I used to make things, you know, like all kids do for the holidays. And I guess my father was very critical. He liked things more like coloring in the lines. <laughs> he kind of had it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> streak in him too. He, he was an artist, you know, basically, but he, that wasn't his job, but he, he, he liked to draw and stuff. My mother didn't, but how oh, my grandmother did. She did a lot of pictures of like watercolors of plants and flowers and everything. So it's like coming from a traditional kind of background. And, um, but I enjoy seeing like more modern art and um, art that's freer. And that's what I like, but it's kind of difficult to make that transition. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I like all kinds of art. What did you go to school for? specifically? Uh, I started going in illustration because I, I also loved, like in magazines, there were a lot of illustrations at that time that I liked. And I thought I would like to do that. I thought they were getting at some kind of feeling that I felt. But then when I got in illustration, even though I liked it, it was like, there's always a project. Here's a, here's a problem and you have to do this. And I would do it, but then I would really just want to do what I wanted. I didn't want to do the problem. And I realized the problem is just a, you know, some kind of a base and so that you have some kind of idea, but I just wanted to do something else. And so I don't know if that was good or bad, but then I got into more into painting and that seemed to be like what they were doing in painting. Did you, did you switch your majors or did you graduate as an illustrator? Well, no, I um, had a dual major, I think, painting and illustration, even though I think my parents thought I'd be an illustrator. They're hoping I'm going to be an illustrator and mm -hmm. illustrate medical books, but <clears throat> <laughs> that. Uh, and but so then I think maybe in the third, the second or third year, I just went. The third year, I just went all to painting, and I really liked that. And what so was that? I'm what sorry. Go ahead. It was interesting in painting. Like every time I go to a different teacher, the whole idea was different. So that was something that I. I liked, you know, some I liked better than others. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So after after you uh, left school, after you you know graduated, uh, tell me about your artistic career after that. I mean, did 
did you know that you were going to become an artist and stay an artist or tell me that story? I guess it was more just like survival at first, you know, because I thought, well, what am I going to do? Because, you know, the whole support, there was no support in those days, like after the, after the University of the Arts. And so I thought, I don't know what I'll do. And I liked keeping, I, I had contact with some of the people that, that went there, but it was difficult uh, because I had to survive. So I started teaching mm -hmm. and um, I taught in Philadelphia for years and I taught art, but it wasn't, to me, it wasn't exactly the same as what the way that I learned art in, in, mm -hmm. in University of the Arts, although I could use that, I could use that. And I really enjoyed a lot of it. When you, when you were teaching, did you maintain a studio yourself? Did you continue making your own work? Uh, let's see. Well, at first, when I first started teaching, um, actually, actually, I started teaching with special ed. And mm -hmm. then I realized that there was an opening for art. And I got into that. And I did have a studio. It was always in my home. Oh. I always had a studio in my home. I once had a studio in South Philly that was like a, attached to my home and I think it's still there and there's a painting on the outside of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Dickinson Street. It looks like two bodies on the outside of the house up, up on the side. I'll have to add that to my scavenger hunt of Philadelphia. That's a good idea. I think it's still there. It's, it's blue and orange. My friend Jeff made it and he's an artist as well. He, he's in sculpture. Well, he painted it um, because his job then was painting houses. Do you, is your studio still in your house? Yeah, I got this house, uh, I guess maybe about seven years ago. And the reason I got it is because I could see it had a big, big room for painting and there was water easily accessible near it. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. Is it in Germantown or is it Mount Airy? I, it's, it's over near the, the co-op, but it's near Wissahickon Avenue. Oh, okay. It's, um, West Westview, Westview. Okay. I don't know if that rings a bell. Uh, Do you ever invite people over to your studio for studio visits? I've only had my friends over so far. I haven't done any of that. That um, like the open studio, but I I guess I could. The thing about my house is people. It's you can't know that it's here, and I feel like that's an advantage to it. And if I had to open studio, then everybody didn't know it was there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I maybe I would do it. You know, people interested in art. I did have some people come over to buy a painting once, and I'm trying to remember where they saw the work. Uh, but usually, it's just people that I know. Oh, I don't know. I, I met Eric Eric Presiendance. He came here. Uh, okay. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. I believe you are. Well, I'm always encouraging people to. Uh, reach out to artists work that they like and and you know ask questions and go to their studio so it's 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 nice to know that you know artists are available for people who are interested in their work so uh, that's yeah. why i bring it up yeah so let's let's talk a little bit about the work that you're actually doing i see you have a, a beautiful piece behind you and i was curious to know did you you know tell me talk me through the progression of your work have you have you always been working in this abstract style or has it shifted over the years? Uh, it's not always been abstract. It used to be like more hard edge, uh, large color fields that were representational. Mm. But then I started going into large squares that are more like Albers, but with a softer edge. And now what I'm doing on this one is I take paintings that I, that I don't like. <laughs> and <laughs> just so I take my, my, a friend of mine's husband came over, he was here and he suggested this. You take gesso and you mix it with water so that it's, you can see through it mm -hmm. and you put it all over the painting. And once that's on there, you just have to wait till it dries. And then you look at it and see what does it suggest to you? Mm -hmm. And it's really fun just working on that. And um, so I took all, Sometimes I, I don't 
always have palettes around. So I use old paintings for palettes. <laughs> make palettes dry. I assume and, these are all your paintings, not other. No, oh no, of course, they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> these things and destroy them. And so um, I always thought they were very ugly, but my friend's husband liked them. And so we started doing this and it's, it's really fun. You should try it. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you primarily work with paints or have you explored other mediums that you find really interesting? Well, I'm saving some stuff now that I want to work on, but maybe you have some suggestion for it. I have all this dryer lint that I've been saving for several years out of the dryer and I take it and I put it in Ziploc bags and uh, they look really good. They look like they have a soft kind of soft texture and they sort of look like a landscape. And so, so are you talking that like these, would you consider these sculptures or are they still flat 2D pieces? I didn't really even consider them art. I mean, I sort of did. I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't think anybody will appreciate this, but I like them mm -hmm. and they're in my studio now. And do you draw as well? Draw, I used to not, not now, the only time I draw is to plan out what I'm going to do next um, or to draw shapes, you know. I'm not drawing that much now. I, I do like the line quality, like a crayon line quality and then like rubbing it because uh, you can see that here, like crayons, various places, not just paint. I like lines, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm, maybe I should draw. <laughs> So would you say your approach is probably very um, like an automatic painting process? I mean, how, how much, yes. how much of a automatic planning is it? It's, it's trying to be spontaneous, but that's hard, hard. You have to really be spontaneous. You can't try to be spontaneous. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like it works out. But then if it doesn't work out, it's okay because then it's another, then you just take that and that's like another palette and mm -hmm. then you can start over. How but thick are these canvases getting? They're pretty thick. You can see they, they have texture there. And I, I always thought that was ugly, but now I'm starting to like it. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of thick paint there. They might be heavy. <laughs> <laughs> during, COVID, during COVID, I thought of this idea, but I haven't been brave enough to start it, of like um, getting some color cloth, like a bright color cloth that's really big, like, 30 feet long and going in the woods and hanging it up. Mm -hmm. and I thought that would surprise people when they go in the woods. <laughs> but I didn't do it. So it sounds like you, you, you're you not just limiting yourself to just painting. You, it sounds like your mind thinks of a variety of different ways of expressing yourself. Yeah, it thinks of a lot. Yeah. Would you ever explore something like poetry or photography or dance or anything else? Yeah, I like poetry. I like reading other people's poems. I would try to write them, but I don't think that I'd be very good. <laughs> I would enjoy it, but no, I don't think anybody would like it. Yeah, I love poetry. I like, um, I like David White. Mm. Um, and I like music. Um, dance. I like to dance. I've just not been doing it, but Recently, it doesn't seem like there's time. It's a good, <laughs> good time for it. Yeah. It's a good so, time now. So tell me about your studio practice. Uh, you know, are you sort of regular in the studio, intermittent, when it strikes you? It kind of changes, Craig, because it used to be I would be very disciplined and I would make myself go in there and just sit there until I would do something. And then lately, I don't, I don't do that. It's more like out of inspiration or, you know, really wanting to do it. And then my time limitation. Um, I've been lately moving my paintings out of this. I have another room in my house. It's all paintings that I have stored and trying to move them into storage. And that's like, and cataloging them every single one. And I've mm -hmm. never done that. And it is horrible to write, you know, their name. Mm -hmm their size and their media and get a picture of them and put that on the computer and wrap it in plastic. And it seems like, oh, that would be simple, but it doesn't seem like it's, it's a huge project. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a burden for a lot of artists. I, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. 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 I'm curious to know, like, so if you used to be much more rigid in your time in the studio, it sounds like you, 
you're really sort of freed up waiting for inspiration. Have you sensed any sort of change in your work when you've changed over that way? Has your work become more free and open or is it the exact same? I think it has become more free and open, but it's scary because every time I don't go in the studio and I don't sit there, then then I'm always worried, well, will I ever do it again? <laughs> will I ever do it again? Uh -huh. but, you know, sometimes when you stop, then it's really hard to get back into it. Yeah. Do you have a, do you, when you're sitting in the studio, one of the questions I, I love talking with artists about is, a lot of artists have rituals. Uh, you know, most artists will say, oh, I have to have the radio on. Uh, you know, I might need a sandwich or a cup of tea or something like that. Can, can you work with other people in your studio? Do you need silence? What's, what's it like in Gene Plow's studio? It's, I'm not usually working with other people. Once I had three other people here and we were all working at the same time. And that was fun, but it wasn't norm, like what usually happens. And then <laughs> I went to another artist's house um and painted with him and that was fun but i'm always self-conscious more self-conscious when other people are around and i don't i can't mm. be as spontaneous for some reason uh maybe if it happened constantly uh it would be good um i don't know i guess when i was in when i was in school i remember when i was in art school and my senior year that was when everybody was demonstrating for Kent State, it was years ago and nobody showed up and I was there by myself working. So maybe, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so uh, you've been making artwork for quite a while now. Uh, can you tell me if there's a difference in terms of um, you not only your approach but the outcome you know what's the difference between when you made a picture when you were just out of school as opposed to now is there any kind of difference or do you still get you get the same sort of feeling or is it completely different now yeah i think um i try to make a body of work now that's similar more similar that's why i think these other ideas of the dryer lid and the hanging things are kind of good ideas but i don't know if they're going to happen because I want everything to be more uniform. Mm. So when I first came out of school, it was like, I felt like I didn't really have a direction. I had a lot of different directions um, that I liked. And then I had to tr try for survival at that time. So I think it's different. And then over the years, it went through different kinds of styles to come out uh, to be able to do what I want now. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you work in like a series? Like, do you have ideas and you work through multiples or is every picture you make a fresh start? I think the series is more like the process, like this series with palettes and painting over. That's one series. And then another series is uh, the square format. Um, and another series is like putting, putting a canvas on the floor, sort of like Jackson Pollock and putting paint drops on it and seeing what happens. They're all kind of spontaneous, but I don't plan a series. It's just like it's happening. And then all, all certain paintings sort of fit into that series as hindsight, you know what I'm saying? So you're, you're, the series would be more about uh, pieces that explore a, a similar uh, new technique. Would you, would you push it that uh, far? Yeah, a similar, it might even be an old technique, but... <clears throat> They are similar, yeah. And then sometimes I see a painting from a long time ago that I liked and I didn't know why I liked it. And then I see, oh, because it's kind of foretelling this other technique that's coming up later. Mm. <laughs> you, so you mentioned the square a couple of times now. Is that yeah, yeah. that's something that really fascinates you? Just, is most of your work square? Uh, a lot of them are, have, a, it may not be square, but it's like a field. A color okay. field in the, more in the center or a main color field and then other um, areas of color around it. Yeah. So it would be, yeah, I still do that, but uh, I, I like that because it... <laughs> I totally understand. I mean, I, there were years that I, I really enjoyed uh, Van Gogh's last works. He did a double square. So oh. it's a rectangular. And I've always was fascinated by that shape for a while. So I can understand your 
your desire for that prayer for you now craig because i looked somewhere i saw read somewhere that you were working on the same copying the same painting for a long time like he is <laughs> yeah well what painting is that <laughs> <laughs> oh for me yes oh i i loved uh Cezanne's, uh the bathers the one in uh the barnes foundation is that the one where they're where it's like this with the big it's, one it's up high so uh, i'll show it to you we'll well, we can talk about that at other time. I like that too, but but I thought, wow, you have a lot of um, persistence and yeah, well, it's just a little focus. But all all artists are are do have persistence. I think even you know from the work that I know of yours, uh, I think what intrigues me about it is your it's really your color palette that I th find interesting because you tend to use. Um, very vibrant colors and a lot of a lot of color opposites that you sort of mix together. So you're not you're not changing your tones or your values, but your the 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 saturation levels are sort of consistent. But you find new ways to use them over and over again in a fresh way. I don't even know, are you, if you're aware of that. <laughs> well, that. I mean, that's all great to know. I should write it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to have it on video. <laughs> good, good. So tell me about other artists for yourself. Do you, do you look at other artists' work? Uh, yeah, I have some books of artists' work. I have a book by uh, Susan Rothenberg. Mm -hmm. I mean, my work doesn't look like hers, but I like it. Mm -hmm. I have books by... Uh, Richard Diebenkorn, who I like, uh, Helen Frankenthaler. Mm -hmm. Then I have a lot of books of uh, my teachers, Warren Rohr. Um, mm -hmm. And I try to be inspired by those, but I don't want to make something that's exactly like what they made. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Do you use them for like have you ever lifted anything like oh that's a great color combination i'm going to use that can ever do that back? i don't know if it's a color combination it's more like an idea of how to approach a canvas um color i like a lot of their color combinations you know maybe with uh susan rothenberg i would think of maybe doing something representational like a person or an animal mm -hmm. and i think those color combinations i might try to um, do something similar. Well, I can see the Rothenberg, you, the way that you handle paint has a similar uh, like a, a quality that you sort of let the paint be paint. Uh, yeah, I like a uh, texture of paint mm -hmm. and I like Frida Kahlo, but <laughs> I see a connection there with my work, but I still like Frida Kahlo. Um, Would it connect to your earlier work, your illustrative work? Yeah, maybe. I like the idea of the self-portraits and that she made, although I'm not, I don't make any. Uh, mm. Just kind of like the feeling with it. I like George O'Keefe. I like a lot of traditional artists. Um, Mark Rothko. You know, I love to ask these questions because it, it allows me to see a different part of your work. I can sort of see those references, whether you mean to put them in there or not. It, it always helps as an insight. Um, I like lots of artists. I can't think of all of them now. I'm just trying to think of the ones that I have the books of. Is your house jammed full of art? Well, I have one room that was jammed full of art, and now I try to get it out to storage, and now I'm getting ready for another show. And so instead, I'm just putting the paintings for the new show in there where the other ones were. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yeah, it's jammed there, and I don't like that. I, I feel like I like a lot of space. So yeah. I don't like a clutter and so things jammed around, you know. So what? Tell me about you know. I do find that when I ask this this next question, artists tend to have a similar answer, which is really what's what's the hardest part of being an artist for you right now? And the reason I talk about similarities is it's usually not about the making of art, um, but what what would be you would say the hardest part about being an artist? Now it's like making myself get into the studio, although it hasn't always been that. Another thing is, uh, one thing is stopping when something is finished, knowing when to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, Has that always been a challenge? Not for like 
hard edge kind of representational work. It wasn't for that because then it would just look like, uh, you know, sort of like perfect. But now if you go too far it, and you have something that you sort of like, then uh -huh. you go too far, you can just end up with a mess. And <laughs> so, but if you don't stop at the right time, like with this painting, what I don't didn't think this was done, but I didn't work want to work on it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I put left it for several months, and then a friend of mine liked it, and so I thought, well, I'll use I'll use this one, and it is representational of, of the more recent work. But mm -hmm. it's hard to go and go in the studio unless you have um, a habit of doing it regularly. Mm -hmm. um, I've always loved what de Kooning said, where he felt his paintings were just a band. Yeah, I love him. That's another yeah. one I love. He yeah. said, what? What did and he say? felt his paintings, he didn't finish his paintings, he just abandoned them. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's yeah. interesting. I like that. <laughs> just sort of give up, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, uh, what's next for you? What are you, are you currently working on, on some new stuff? Are you getting ready for, I hear you just said you're getting ready for a show. Do you take a break for a little bit or what do you, what's on, what's on your mind? What's on my mind is, well, I wonder what'll be happening um, at our next, at the next show, which is in, uh, I think June at Muse Gallery. Oh, okay. I have all the work ready now. I don't have frames. I don't know if I'll frame it, but we have at the gallery, uh, we've changed the inside of the gallery so that we have walls closer to the front so people can just pass by and see it. And we put all the information in there. So I don't know what the situation will be like in June. It may have to be all up front like that. Mm -hmm. But I have the work ready and that's unusual because I usually have to look for work to go in something. So I feel I feel good now that I've been able to produce work over this last year and a half because I didn't feel good about my last show. It mm -hmm. seemed too stilted. <laughs> so <laughs> so are you've been with Muse Gallery for a while now? Yeah, I like Muse Gallery. I like Old City. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also you are online. Yes, I'm online. I didn't give you the website, but it's just it's just my name, jeanplow.com. Dot com. Well, actually, I think we had a link to your Instagram account. Yeah, I use Instagram a lot. I really like that. Yeah. Are you finding success with it? I mean, do people talk about your work or are they, do people reach out at all? What I like is that I have like some immediate kind of way to show the work after it's done. If I make something and I put it on Instagram and I think that it looks good, then I'm happy and I feel like, well, I made something and then I did something with it. Uh, and then it's surprising what looks good on Instagram and what doesn't. And I have a few regular people that follow, that are following me and I have some that I like and it's very inspiring. Even though it's like a little tiny picture, mm -hmm. it's inspiring to look at Instagram and see what some people that I used to know are doing and mm -hmm. people that I like that's very inspiring. I find that's a wonderful thing to be able to look at work that you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you don't get lost in it, sometimes you start looking at <laughs> Down it. the rabbit hole of the yeah, internet. Down the rabbit hole is right. Get lost <laughs> right. In space. You don't want to do that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just curious after your the next show and when did you say June or July? June. June. Okay. Um, do you then start work on the, the next show after that? Or what's your normal process? <laughs> I don't really know, Craig, what I'll be doing um, after that. It usually is a lot of energy to put a show together. And then afterwards, you get, kind of get an idea of what to do next after you see it. Right. So, hmm. Will the show in June be like what's behind you? That those? Yeah, it'll be like that I have about or I don't I don't know if I'll be able to include these because of the COVID and the situation at the gallery, but I have about four or five really large ones. How how large is large? I'm just curious. 50, 50 inches by 50 inches. I okay, have all right. Yeah. So that scale is that a scale that you're comfortable working with? Well, when I start taking them to the truck, I think no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the honesty that I love. <laughs> unless somebody else. Yeah, 
I like a, a big painting because it's kind of give, putting you in an environment, especially when there's several of them, mm -hmm. you know, with a, more of a feeling like, I remember, um, I guess this picture of, of a, or going and seeing, like I was traveling Mark Rothko's chapel where there's a whole lot of big mm -hmm. paintings, they're all gray and brown. And I thought, this is great. And just the feeling that you get when you're inside of a room that that's all there is. Um, well, I love. I can't wait to see the the next piece. Do you ever work real small too? I worked really small when I was dropping paint um, hmm. using the dropping paint technique because I ha would have like some little wood panels and I would put that on the little wood panels. Uh, but recently, I guess the smallest that I would work now is maybe like nine by thirteen or yeah. twelve by twelve, but that's pretty small. So when you see people and they respond to your work, obviously there's a, there's usually always a, I find a different response to the small work as to as the large work. But I, I'd be curious to know, like, do people respond to your work like you expect them to? Or what, what do you feel about the way people react to your work? Well, I'm happy if they, if they like it, because I feel that and then I was able to convey some kind of a feeling that that I had when I made it, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that's true. Do they ever surprise you by what they say about your work? Well, I have one friend, and he always surprises me with what he says. But his name is Perry, and he thinks everything looks like a map. And every time he's telling like what country it is or what <laughs> it is, and he does that to everybody's work. Maybe you should start making maps just to just to play with them. <laughs> no, he does that. He makes maps. He's got uh, okay. the maps. <laughs> That's That's funny. Funny. He thinks about it all the time because he does it. But so you're gonna your your where your studio is now. It's in your house, correct? Yes, it's in the and, house. And that's you don't plan on moving your studio. You you you're no, not. No, I like it there. I like it there because if it's bad weather, I can just go there and I can keep everything in one spot. Yeah. You now, recently I have some friends that have studios over at the mill and I thought, would I want to do that? And I thought, no, but I like to visit them over there at their <laughs> studio. Right. Yeah. Well, there is something to be said to be able to roll out of bed into the studio or vice versa, I think. Yeah, but it's sort of psychological. You could roll out of bed and roll into the studio, but you could try to make yourself do that on some days yeah that's what my aim is now yeah some days like yeah well if i wasn't going to talk with you today and i'm really happy to to speak with you then i would have um gone in the studio <laughs> is the piece behind you the, the latest piece that you've made no there's a lot more after that uh, right. i thought this would look good in the in the in the photograph and i thought it would it has it a lot of energy is it titled? Do you title your works? No, I do title them. And sometimes I just title them in a practical way so that I can remember what it was. This mm. one doesn't have any title yet. Do you have any good idea? Uh, I'll send you a list of my top, top list, top names. Is this as long as they're not a map <laughs> name of the place? <laughs> well, I, be, I, I hope that we can see this piece online somewhere because it's tough to see it through the video. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, Post it on Instagram, Instagram or your website. I'm hoping that the the, the people who watch this would be interested to see it in detail. Uh, so okay, I've I've put it on my website, and I'll uh, I don't I don't think I put it on Instagram yet. I'm okay. Sure. Well, I look forward to it. Okay. Well, uh, I, I I could continue to just talk to you all day, but uh, I I do want to thank you for coming today. It was well, really great. Great. Great talking with you. I want to encourage everybody out there, uh, if you haven't already, please visit uh, <laughs> the website uh, and the Instagram. And if you're on Facebook or anywhere else, uh, ask questions of the artists. That's something a lot of people are, they seem to be hesitant to do. So reach out, ask questions and see if you can't score an invitation to the show coming up in June or July. Uh, so I want to thank you again, and a big thank you to all of our donors and those who came this evening. Thank you for uh, tuning into Art Show, and I hope to see you again next week.
Thank you and have a nice night.